over to the house. Thank you. Ms. <coughs> uh, uh, yep. <laughs> M Tora, Mr. Fox, Speaker, uh, I'll get off my phone. Uh, um, it was a very interesting debate that was had uh, around this bill in regards to the RFR land. And I want to acknowledge the officials from OTS because, to be sure, the Crown are very good at negotiating now. They've had lots of practice at it. And things that may have been agreed to back in the day with other uh, bigger iwi are no longer agreed to. And those provisions are no longer uh, are provided for because our negotiators, on behalf of the Crown, have got very good at it. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's what, how they do their job. But we got to a debate about the RFR lands. And we said RFR stands for First Right of Refusal. That's what we call them. But in fact, we discovered they were not. They were sixth right of refusal. And there was a whole list of other people that went through the process if you uh, wanted to get some land back. Uh, there's a whole list of people that they go through, including charities. Charities, any charity could be the Fox Foundation for uh, advancing little foxes. It could be any charity. And we do not believe and we did not believe that the foxes should be, have any greater right than the tangata whenua to uh, that land back in redress. And so the committee itself made note, and I want to read from the committee's report. It says, Te uh, Tāwhiro argued that the clause is unfair because the RFR properties in question were not gifted to the Crown. The land was confiscated, in case we, people didn't understand that. The Crown-owned land continues to be available for charitable purposes, and Crown is not acting in good faith when it offers these, lease land, oh, these lands as redress, but may ignore the redress in favour of any charitable organisation, including the Fox one. It decides should receive the land instead, consequently placing the land out of reach of the iwi. And we suggested as a committee that uh, that clause should be removed and charitable organisations, unless they are charitable organisations of the iwi, uh, should not be able to uh, have RFR land offered to them before the iwi. And why should they? Because these lands were confiscated and, again, by their own admission, the Crown said confisc confiscated unfairly through Raupatu, in a, following a war that the Crown initiated. The Crown initiated the war. This was not Māori people in the backwoods somewhere um, picking fights with settlers. Simply because they refused to sell their land, the Crown initiated war against them and then confiscated the entirety of all their land holdings. And this settlement is for approximately 8,680,000, if I added those numbers up correctly from uh, the previous speaker's comments. Landless. They're sixth on the list behind a whole group of other people and charities, and their land was taken by confiscation after a war that the Crown initiated on them for refusing to sell their land. So uh, Ngāti Pukinga didn't even take part in the war. They respected their commitment to the Treaty of Waitangi. So the war that carry, was carried out in Tauranga Moana area, they did not even take part in it, and still their land was confiscated. Still it was. And in, in fact, it was said here, the Crown acknowledges that despite leading Te Ta Te Tawera and Ngāti Pukenga to believe their interests would be scrupulously respected, the confiscation of Raupatu at Tauranga Moana and Tauranga District Lands Act 1867 and 1868 unjustly extinguished the customary right and title of Te, Ta o te Tawera and Ngāti Pukenga. And there it is. They actually did return some land, but they didn't return it to the people. They returned it to individuals. They returned 98 acres, 98.5 actually, acres, and, but they were returned to individuals, and again, their cultural interests in the land 
we're lost. And this is sort of at, <laughs> it is, it's the heart of this. And the issues that are going on in Tauranga Moana right now. They signed this treaty settlement in uh, 2013, and the redress will never match the hurt. The redress will never compensate for what was done. And again, I'll say it again, the biggest gift that Māori give to this nation is accepting treaty settlement at all. At all. Ngāti Pukanga lost their land. They were dispersed between four small and scattered kāinga, not even on their own land. And since 2010, the Matakahi, the tribe's negotiating team, worked tirelessly to protect their interests. Uh, the Matakahi is a traditional war movement. It's the wedge formation uh, to split the enemy's ranks. And they were formidable, and they carried out their wedge negotiation uh, Rahira Ohia, Shane Ashby, Harry uh, Mikaide, Aretha Gray, Dominic Wilson, and the late Te Awanuiarangi Black. Three years of negotiating, and OTS, you guys are pretty good at negotiating now. The Crown, we're pretty good, but they're pretty good, because they have history on their side. They have uh, truth on their side. <laughs> they have pain and hurt, and now, when they sign these settlements, they move from being parties of protest to parties of progress, and they take their people forward, accepting that $7 million and then a little bit more for this and a little bit more for that is never going to be good enough, never going to be good enough, but they accept it anyway, and they gird up their loins, and they take a step into the future, and they get their people together. And you know what? Awanuiarangi and... Uh, Kapai Tommy Wilson, they had a whare that they called their dreaming whare. They called it something. That's not what they called it. The right to dream. Minister of dreams, where they would sit and they would talk about the future and their aspirations and they let their dreams fly. This is what we can do. This is where we can take our people. When he passed away uh, at his tangi, the people, the warriors who came out, said, it's okay. His number one goal was to grow the puna, grow the puna of reo, grow the puna of knowledge, grow the puna of cultural history, of uh, cultural um, action, traditions, revitalization, and he did. They all did, because they dared to dream that despite what had happened to them and their people, at no fault of their own, ever, they dared to dream and they moved forward into the future. So, Mr Speaker, I'm proud to stand here today as part of the Māori Affairs Select Committee, recognising the work of the Minister of OTS and of uh, our Chair and our Committee uh, to support this whānau to this point. And despite the, the pitiful um, pittance of a settlement that they will receive, they, they accept it, and they move on, and they're grateful, and they hold their heads up because they're resilient, and they're strong, and they stand in the traditions of their ancestors and tell the world that we rise. No matter what happens, we rise. Mr. Speaker. Uh,